Welcome back YouTube, it's to my channel of an everyday life of an athlete. If you're following me right now, I'm SD. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and sharing my life stories with especially syndrome, OCD and the like, along with tips and advice with your general health and mental health in general, along with just any other things that I can be for your guide, mental support, whatever it may be, I'm hoping to be your girl. So it has been put to my as I said that due to the change of circumstances, I'm going to try and pump out in many videos for you guys while I'm away. Which I humbly apologise. I know some of you are really wanting maybe some of the real important stuff, which I hope to come back onto it, whatever it was. Please, you know, feel free to comment them below or even private message me about them. Um, so these ones are going to be just quickly, just a bit more on the narcissist series, even though because it is bright, broad, and wide, as well as the mental health that I'm trying to do, as well as the autism, and we'll do as much as we can, anyways, as well as hopefully some words of encouragement for you guys if you need it. So, and also to do, guys, before I do this, as you know, I'm no medical doctor, I'm just your normal everyday Joe Bluff. So, if you see any warning signs and symptoms as of late, you know, for your seek professional for your help for yourself or your loved one, or professional advice for yourself or your loved one. I don't forever condone self-harm for any of you. I want you to be healthy and safe. So this one's obviously about the seven signs you're in a while you're in a relationship with a narcissist, of an introvert narcissist especially, just to look out for the warning signs and symptoms. So if you see, like I said, if you think that this video is not for you, by all means, pass it along because I know in my heart there will be someone that needs to hear this. So let's begin this before I run out of time, so to speak. As we know, basically, sometimes it's hard to differentiate the differentiations of these different narcissist types, as I've clearly addressed already, which will come up onto your cha my channel soon. But in the meantime, basically, we need to know the warning signs and symptoms, the characteristics, traits, the differentiations between them all and whatever it may be. But as we know, basically, with narcissism, however, this is often associated with m many and external manifestations, which will include, you know, basic attention seeking, grand standing, the superficial charm that they charm their, you know, peers, the lack of reliability, the violate boundaries, the manipulation, the mind control, and many other characteristic traits. However, just to be in mind, not all narcissists are openly grandiose or outwardly intrusive. No way, far from it. Here today, I'm talking about the introvert narcissist. Various researchers and authors have written about the introverted narcissist, which I'm here to address too, identified as the covert narcissist, the hypersensitive narcissist, the closet narcissist, and the vulnerable narcissist. This subtype of narcissism is more have hidden, however. And yet they do, however, carry the same self conceit and negative contagion as the extroverted counterparts of the narcissist. It's important however to point out that not that many introverts are not always narcissistic however. The ones who are however may have a way of influencing others around them to feel off balance and or insecure. What both extrovert and introvert narcissists have in common however is their employment of an outer veneer of superiority. To disguise their inner sense of vulnerability, while well, the extroverted narcissist will say, in so many ways, that I'm better than you. The introverted narcissist, however, will strongly hint at it. Hopefully, with these seven signs below that I'm going to share with you all, may show some of these traits, or while well, some people may exhibit some of their following traits at one time or another, a pathological Introverted narcissist tends to dwell habitually in several of these feeling, following prisoners while remaining largely unaware of or unconcerned with how these behaviours will affect others. And just to bear in mind, there could be many more than just seven signs. I'm just clearly addressing seven. But if you know more than seven of what I'm saying to you all, feel free to actually list them in the comments below or what have you. So let's begin this. Number one, quiet smugness superior or superiority. Many extrovert narcissists are fairly easy to spot with their grandiose mannerisms and attention seeking like machinations. But however, on the other hand, introvert narcissists, on the other hand, can be more difficult to pinpoint, at least on the outset of this. They tend to observe judgmentally rather than act and listen half-heartedly rather than speak. 
Yet the acquired brand of superiority complex betrays itself through a lot of detachment and disconcerting non-verbal cues. They might not express the negativity outright, but you get the distinct sense that they are really tolerant with their lack of eye contact, condescending glare, eye rolling, dismissive gestures, groans, <laughs> and sighs, highly distractedly, quick boredom, and polite yawns, and overall an attentiveness. When they do speak, however, the comments tend to be critical and judgmental, focusing on their own conceited, conceited views. This seemingly impenetrable smugness is, of course, a front, covering a sense of vulnerability within them. Part of the insecurity may be the inability to relate to people meaningfully as human beings. A famous quote to actually clearly illustrate this is Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang. There one cries because one is sad. I cry because others are stupid. And that makes me sad. This is the most common and popular one that Sheldon Cooper obviously shares. Just bear in mind though, obviously, like some of those traits there also can show a little bit of people on the spectrum of Asperger's syndrome as well as autism and that. So we need to be careful how we label these mentalities as well. Number two, self-absorption. One of the most common characteristics of an introverted narcissist is a sense of withdrawn self-centeredness. While many introverts are more quiet but are good listeners, introvert narcissists tend to be reticent and poor listeners. Often they will have a quick assessment of a person or even a given situation they might find it uninteresting, flawed or unworthy of their own intention and mentally churn out, waning, block you out regardless. While most mature adults are capable of recognizing nuances of issues and giving people the benefit of the doubt, however, on the other hand, introvert narcissists tend to focus on only what they selfishly want and find agreeable. All else might be labeled as boring or stupid. Sorry, lack of empathy. You're sick, but what about driving me to the mall? Is a common statement, but as we know, basically, lack of empathy again can roll into all these different types of narcissists. Both extrovert and introvert narcissists, however, do share these traits of I just clearly share. Narcissists are often oblivious to or dismissive of others' thoughts and feelings. Even when you tell them how the attitudes and actions are generating adverse reactions or consequences, their response will be more about themselves. This is such the self-absorption of it all. For passive aggressiveness, some introverted narcissists deal with disagreeable people or circumstances in passive aggressive ways. Upon receiving a reasonable request from you, they might say, okay, yes, of course, as you wish. Then either do, no then either do nothing or behave however they please. When you inquire that why they didn't follow through on an arrangement, they may shrug it off with an excuse or say nonchalantly that their way was better. Five, highly sensitive. So, Catrice Glenn Gabbard notes that some introvert narcissists are exquisitively sensitive. They tend to be affronted by any signs of real or perceptive slights and handle criticism poorly. In the face of negative feedback, some introvert narcissists will defend with an increased sense of superior smugness and dismissal fight. While others will respond with sullen withdrawal flight, typically they will not let on how much the negative experience bothers them and instead use their well-rehearsed aloofness to continue their schemes. Or schema, I should say. Of course, not all highly sensitive people are narcissistic, as I said before. What distinguishes the narcissist is their falsely constructed superiority complex. Number six, the misunderstood special person. The self perceptions of some introverted narcissists, however, 
will include notions such as I'm special, I'm one of a kind, I'm ahead of time, I'm so unique, no one understands me and I'm so smart, I'm above everyone else. Statements such as these reveal narcissistic, common narcissistic tendencies of superiority, grand grandiosity and entitlement. By constructing the superficial belief that one is exceptional, the introvert narcissist creates a reassuring role. Submerging the fearful and vulnerable true self. Seven, last but not least. Impersonal and difficult relationships. As mentioned earlier, part of the in introvert narcissist insecurity is the ability to genuinely connect with people around them. To this extent, the aloofness and or smugness that they're portraying serve as a defensive mechanism, however. Keeping people away, at least the narcissist is exposed for her, him or her, his or her, um, to personal inadequacy. Some introvert narcissists narrowly focus on self absorbing work, technology, social networking, small cliques, books, games, fantasies, and all other endeavors to minimize any wider human interactions. These activities may also help them to interact their covert self important personas. Well, this quickly ends basically the seven stars that you are in a relationship with an introvert. Now, so just give me a like, a thumbs up, a support, comment below. Feel free to share these videos around to family and friends. Feel free to also, if you want to know me and follow me on my journey with all this and more, to subscribe to my channel as well as turning on the notification bell so you're not up and ready for what's to come. And all for the do, guys, thanks for your support. Do what you love, love what you do, dream big, you know, aim high. Thanks for signing out and I'll see you all again soon. Ciao for now.